Hey everybody, this is uh, Jim at sp500chart.com. I'm doing this video on July 28th, 2012 on Saturday afternoon about 4 o'clock. Before we get started, I just want to remind you that this is being brought to you by sp500chart.com using time-honored techniques to understand modern markets featuring daily technical analysis videos of the S&P 500 index. This is a, a subscription site, but I do a a free weekly update um, so that everybody gets to see whether this stuff works or not. So uh, let's take a look, but before we do, I have to remind you as always that the website and this video are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research, and you need to make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. And uh, even if I knew what your uh, personal financial situation was, I'm still not a licensed financial professional. So don't do what I say. Just watch the video and enjoy, because I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. And the first thing that I have to say is pretty simple. Um, once again, despite the little fear and trepidation along the way, and even my fear and trepidation along the way, another inverted head and shoulders pattern. Well, we'll just say another head and shoulders pattern because whether they're inverted or tops, it doesn't matter. But another one has worked. Um, it's just in amazing how well this works. Um, as a matter of fact, you could even make the case we're on the, on the verge of seeing three inverted head and shoulders patterns reach their minimum target at the same time. Now, let, let's go back though and take a look at the, at the week. Um, we started the week uh, off, <coughs> excuse me, with Friday of the 20th of last week, breaking our rising channel, uh, breaking that support line. So we got a heads up and we recognized that this is the, the shot across the bow, as it were, that this upward trend was now in jeopardy. And my personal feeling was, was that I, I kind of thought we might get a little back test up to this line then come back down, but that is not the way it happened. Instead, on Monday, we just got a big gap down, just point blank, big gap down. The entire day uh, was the formation of a bear flag. Now, this happened very near an area of uh, a support line, so the word on Tuesday was, watch this. If it plays out like a bear flag, then it'll break down and likely break down, you know, for a fairly sizable uh, loss. And so if you, if you had gotten Monday's video on the 23rd, you would have been looking for that potential breakdown. And had you known, uh, then you would have, at, because this was actually a tradable event, okay? When we had this gap down, that's really not a tradable event. When we have this gap up, sad, but that's not a really a tradable event, unless you're a futures trader. But this was a tradable event. You could see this give way. And when you did, you, you could have known at that point, yes, we're now in for a, a day of significant weakness. As a matter of fact, from the point of the breakdown, which you probably would have noticed about 1347. There was roughly uh, a 17 point difference. So being armed with the knowledge that this was a bear flag, by the time it broke down, you either could have profited from a 17 point move in the S&P, or you could have saved yourself a 17 point uh, loss. Of course, we know that the, the markets are pretty volatile, so we're not, uh, at least I'm not expecting a huge down move quite yet. And the reason was, was because we still hadn't made our minimum targets. I kept coming back to that, even when part of me said, but wait a minute, this is looking pretty bad. 
I still had to keep coming back. No, we've got these minimum targets that have stacked up on each other, and we should make it. And uh, here, just for the heck of it, let me tell you what I was thinking of what I'm talking about. We had a minimum target from this inverted head and shoulders pattern right there. Okay? Minimum target. We had a minimum target from... See if I can get... <coughs> we had a minimum target from this inverted head and shoulders pattern. And the target was about the same. 1388 to 1290, 1292, something in that area. Okay? We got up to 1388. Now we've got this other little strangely shaped, but still what looks to be an inverted head and shoulders pattern right here. And of course its target is uh, roughly 1392. So it hasn't quite met the target yet, but you can see that the target of those previous two uh, inverted head and shoulders has now been met. Now, so this week basically uh, we also on Wednesday noticed that there was a repeating line of resistance right here. And, uh, and I issued the warning, not the warning, but I, but I issued the heads up that if we get over this line right here, expect a move to at least 1362, 1363, something like that, and wang it, it, just right off the bat, and unfortunately not a tradable event, that move took place as a gap up. We then came back, then started up again. Now I'm going to, now, uh, so, so the week really didn't throw us any big surprises other than Monday's big gap down and Thursday's gap up. The moves themselves were not that unusual. The fact that they occurred, quote, overnight is just where the surprise was. So now, those of you who uh, follow me, you'll want to pay attention to this uh, because we have a pattern that looks like it's developing that's telling us that the rally of the past three days ain't going to last forever. Matter of fact, it may, it's probably going to have a hard time lasting for another day. But, uh, but I'll tell you why when we, when we get into this uh, chart pattern here in just a second. So as I was saying, we're looking now at this inverted head and shoulders pattern here. And it has a, a projected move up to roughly, oh, almost exactly 1392. But if you'll notice, this entire move up is, is being constrained, as we see, by one, two, three touches on the top, and one, two. And I'm not sure about the way things ended on Friday. That might be a touch setting up for a bounce, or it might not be. But the point is this. All of this is happening in the shape of an ascending wedge. Ascending wedges almost always produce a drop. Now occasionally you will get what looks to be an ascending wedge that comes down and it actually turns into a parallel channel. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say for sure that, um, that this one couldn't do the same thing. And if it did, oh, where did my line go? I just created a parallel line somewhere. Come on, computer. Well, anyway, you get the point is this, is that if this bottom line breaks, it is possible that we get a bounce at a line that is parallel to this top one right here. But uh, this has all of the hallmarks of a wedge in it. And one of them that I've pointed out with this little line right here, as I've, I've mentioned before, sometimes when you, when you get what looks to be a wedge, if you snap that line to, that, that bisects your top and the bottom line of the wedge, it's amazing how often that line ends up playing out with some uh, technically significant things. So basically what's happened is we've got this ascending wedge 
that is for the most part constrained below this midline but every now and then gaps up to that top line okay so let's see what happens as we go into next week if this wedge breaks down then we've got a potential support area here at the neckline of this uh, in small inverted head and shoulders pattern but let me show you what's of a little bit more concern um, than anything else and that is uh, and oh and by the way if you extend these lines isn't it funny how you end up where this uh, where these extended uh, wedge lines where they intersect is right at a back test of this channel right here and again you know strange things happen when you when you look at charts for a long time so uh, oh, oh the other thing I wanted to show you is is we are also dealing with a um, a neckline from our head and shoulders top back from last spring right about that same area and uh, I don't know why that line doubled up on me it shouldn't have but uh, suffice it to say necklines from uh, from head and shoulders or inverted head and shoulders patterns tend to serve as either resistance or support depending upon which way they're being approached so I would be going into this week looking for signs that this wedge is breaking and when it breaks it will but when it breaks I would be looking for if it happens at this uh, neckline up here then that could be a, a break that um, that carries with it some some longer range downside because this should be fairly significant resistance um, of course uh, you, you, so what I'm saying is basically if you make it up there and you're long you might think about booking some profits okay but I don't want to tell you what to do because I'm just a guy that draws lines on charts but you can see that these lines are working pretty well I think we got a little bit more upside potentially even if this line breaks there's a there's a good chance that we get a back test maybe up around uh, possibly even or you know in the high 1390s or uh, is in in the very 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 low 1400s so look guys that is the uh, that is the analysis for uh, the trading day of uh, 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 Friday 727 2012 and our weekly review want to thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this and uh, if you're a subscriber I want to uh, offer my heartfelt thanks to you um, the the uh, subscription service is the response has been excellent I really do appreciate it but more than anything else it is my hope that you get something out of this you know I'm not going to be right every time as a matter of fact this week I was pretty wrong not on the S&P calls but I was pretty wrong on the stocks that I held and I got uh, I got uh, I actually uh, lost money this week so there it goes to show you nobody's perfect I'm not either and at some point I'm gonna get the S&P dead wrong but look for right now this stuff seems to be working so I appreciate you hanging around I appreciate you subscribing and uh, maybe one of these days I'll wise up and I'll dump my sorry stocks and I'll just trade the S&P. But it's hard for me to do that. So look, guys, thanks again. Take care.